Welcome to another segment of Under the Microscope. Uh, this is Jeff Gold, and I'm very pleased today to be joined by Dr. Devin Nickel. Uh, Dr. Nickel is the Associate Professor in the College of Medicine, who is the founding co-editor-in-chief of the Journal of Interprofessional Education and Practice. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, would you mind telling our audience a little bit about the journal, why it was founded, and why it's so important to the future of the practice of medicine and the overall spectrum of healthcare? Sure. Well, a few years ago when we were trying to expand our local efforts in the area of interprofessional education, or IPE, we spoke with people nationally and reviewed the literature that was available. And a theme that kept coming up was the fact that people felt like they needed more ways, more outlets for their scholarly activities in this area. It was a little bit difficult to find models of educational activities being done at other locations that we could emulate. And after talking with our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Deli Davies, yep. we decided to approach Elsevier with the idea of founding a new journal in this area to really serve the people on the front lines of IPE. Well, that's really exciting. And I know that Dr. Davies is really a champion of interprofessional education, that our programs here on IPE are really extensive and, and in a strong national leadership position. And so what was the response by the, uh, by the publishers? So the Elsevier, the publisher, was very excited about the idea. We approached several other national partners to serve on the editorial board, mm -hmm. and everyone seemed to think it was something that was very much needed. So now, um, as of April, we've published our first issue, and um, there have been several national groups that are letting their membership know about the journal. We've started seeing a whole lot of submissions, so I think it's going to be something that people are going to find really useful. And is this going to be predominantly what I would call an e-journal? Is there going to be a print version? Is there much discussion about that? So at this time, with the journal starting out, if you picture the publisher's perspective, mm -hmm. they want to make sure there's going to be a market for it. So right now, sure. it's an e-journal. It's a quarterly journal. And it may well be that as time goes on, we want to expand that some. Um, but we'll have to kind of see what the level of interest is. And at least initially, it seems pretty high. So could you give us a couple of uh, representative ideas of what the type of material that the editors are looking for for the journal? Sure. There are two big areas right now where we could really use a whole lot of scholarly output, one of which, and probably the most important, are manuscripts and research projects mm -hmm. that demonstrate the actual impact of IPE, the evidence that it affects the meaningful outcomes, patient outcomes, financial mm -hmm. outcomes, patient mm -hmm. satisfaction. That would be one big area where we would really like a whole lot more evidence to lean on in, in the area of IPE. The other thing that we can certainly use are models of educational activities that work well. So around the country, different people have tried doing the same thing in different ways, and there's probably a best way to do it. And the easier that we can disseminate that knowledge to everyone else, the, the easier it'll be for all of us. So that's a nice way of saying we probably don't all need to make the same mistakes. No, we can learn from once, each other. Yes. Right, only once. So if our faculty or if our students or, or other members of our community uh, wanted to either learn more about the journal or they wanted to submit a manuscript for uh, review, how would they do that? So the easiest way would be to go to the journal's website, which is jieponline.com, and there are instructions for authors and links to eVise, which is the uh, document management system that Elsevier uses, and you can very easily create your account and upload a manuscript um, right away. So I've actually done that just as an experience just to see how easy it was and it actually works flawlessly. Oh, excellent. I'm it really you. does and I, I'm sure that our faculty and our students would be, will be very excited. Well, the feedback I've heard from folks is that the eVise system is easier to use than most other document management systems they've used. So I think well, having know. edited for many journals in my life, I, I will uh, certainly agree with that. It's way easier than the stacks of manila envelopes with manuscripts being mailed around the country. Too. I will certainly agree with that as well. <laughs> Dr. Nickel, thank you so much for thank being you. with us today. And thank you so much for being with us today on this segment of Under the Microscope.